Welcome back to the kitchen, uh, Buona Sera. We're making risotto tonight. And uh, one of the reasons I'm doing this is a very practical reason. So uh, from time to time, I auction off a, a charity dinner. So I use my company, Fulvio's Italian Sausage, and we plan a dinner, Hello Rob. And what we do is, is I donate that dinner to a charity, and then we auction it off to the highest bidder, and we make a five course Italian meal in the winner's home. We don't do it here. And, and we, we make a fair amount of money for the charity, which is a nice thing to do. And I have one coming up on Friday night. We auctioned it off for Coachella Valley Volunteers in Medicine. And so part of the five course meal was of course a little appetizer. Lori, nice to see it. And one of the appetizers that most people really enjoy, we made them before a couple, about a month ago, we did arancini, the risotto bowls. But I had pre-made the risotto and I just, we kind of went through the steps to make the arancini themselves. So tonight we're gonna to make the risotto because on Friday I gotta serve risotto bowls. Tom, nice to see you, Captain. Good to see you. Hello, David Walt, Kamagul. <laughs> you love the Kamagul. Uh, so actually I've got my whole setup for, for doing the, the fried risotto balls. Hello, Josh, with Joshua Carr uh, from Desert Theatricals. Congratulations on a great run. Uh, I heard that the uh, forum was fantastic. Cheers to you guys. Having a little, since I was making Italian food, I got my brother and sister-in-law brought in a, a Montepulciano, the Bruzzo. So we're having that. Hope everybody is uh, enjoying their evening. Uh, my in-laws are watching, Dana, Roland. So we're gonna make risotto, and uh, then later tonight, I'm gonna turn it into risotto balls. And then the nice thing is you make them, throw them in the fridge, and then when you're ready to serve them, on Friday, I'm gonna take them over to the home where we're serving them. It's over in Thunderbird. It's gonna be a nice evening. And you put them in the oven for about eh, 20, 25 minutes, and they come back, they're crisp, they're ready to go. But you gotta start with really good risotto. And um, risotto is, it's an easy dish in a lot of ways. Some people don't wanna make it because it's a lot of work. And it is, it's time consuming work. So we're gonna go through the steps and we'll get the risotto going. Um, I thought about this recipe and is it an exciting recipe? I don't know about that, but if you don't make risotto at home, you might find this enjoyable and, and uh, maybe a little informational as well. Sydney, cheers. Let me try this. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, that's velvety goodness. All right, so for our risotto, I'm gonna need some shallots. Chopped onions, fine. I like shallots because they're a little more delicate. George, thanks for tuning in. Come on over. I got my chicken stock. Bill Senso, nice to see you. I didn't see Liz when I was at Gelson's today. So, you, Monica, you, 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 are you kidding me? Roommates should be loving the risotto. All right, so we got some shallot. We're gonna saute that up. Uh, we've got Parmesan cheese, which we're gonna add in a little bit later. Uh, a little white wine. I've got some Chardonnay, so that's a really good choice. Uh, you're gonna need a little olive oil. Got some great olive oil. Hello, K.E. So I've got this pan heating, and so what I wanna do, I'm gonna take a couple of tablespoons of butter, just a, a nice chunk of butter. We'll put that in the big pan. Arthur, okay, Art, I won't, you're not here. Um, <laughs> Monica, once you, once you make the, the right recipe, it'll be great. All right, and so we're gonna put our olive oil and our butter in the pan here. Over here, I've got my chicken stock heating up. Uh, you can use chicken stock 100%. You can kind of blend it with chicken stock white wine, which we're gonna do, or you can use chicken stock and water. I don't recommend using all water. Hello, Anna, Alan, nice to see you. Now, you don't wanna boil the chicken stock. You just wanna bring it up to temperature because the trick to risotto, it's, it's a bit of a process. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start over here in the big pan. And then once we get the, the Arborio rice, there are a couple of different kinds of rice you can use for risotto. Um, I got this lovely box, Superfino, Italian imported Arborio rice, product of Italy, Cola Vita. Not expensive, easy to find. <laughs> I'm not gonna say a word, Art, you're not here. So there. All right, uh, we're making dinner for 10 people. So I wanna make 20 risotto balls so everybody can have two. Hello, Jan. So, I'm going to open up my rice. I'll use this whole box, which is fine. That'll be plenty. Now, 
The first thing we're going to do, I'm bringing up my olive oil and my butter to temperature. I know your wedding is too, it, it, oh my gosh, that's incredible. Congratulations to Jan and Jim. Now I'm gonna take my uh, lovely chopped up shallots, I'm gonna put them in there, the whole thing. Uh, that is, it was like one big shallot and then a little one chopped up. All right, so we got that in there. Bring my temperature up a little bit. I want that to sizzle a little. And so what we're going to do is saute this, and not for a long time. You don't have to really, you know, cook them down, the shallots, because we're going to add in the rice and, uh, <laughs> Randy, <laughs> uh, we're going to add in the arborio rice. And the, the thing that's important about this, you've got your butter and your olive oil, and you want to add in the, uh, the rice itself with the shallot in there. And then you want the rice to absorb a little bit of that butter and the olive oil, and that's going to open up that grain of rice and allow it to absorb more of our liquid, the wine and the chicken stock. And you're going to do this a little bit at a time. Again, it is a process, but it's really worth it when when guests enjoy risotto. And this is a great dish just as, you know, you can serve it with everything. You can put, you know, porcini mushrooms, shrimp, scallops, asparagus, anything like that. I'm just going to make good old fashioned Parmesan cheese risotto because I'm going to turn it into arancini risotto balls uh, a little bit later. But you can, this is a great base for so many great dishes. I like to make risotto with a little asparagus and then put a nice filet on top of it. Uh, <laughs> Oh, the special ingredient, love, absolutely. All right, so we're sauteing a little bit of this shallot. Again, you can use a white or yellow onion if you want to do that. Um, I find the shallots just a little milder, a little softer. Uh, so I like that with my risotto. All right, got the shallot sauteed up a little bit. I was thinking about doing risotto tonight, and it's just practical because I've got this big dinner for a whole bunch of people. Hello, Francesca. Nice to see you. Uh, so I thought, you know, I've got to make the risotto anyway. We haven't done it together, so we do it tonight. But I also thought it's a little bit like um, Zsa Zsa Gabor's fourth husband on their honeymoon. He walked into the suite and he looked at her and he said, I, I know what to do and I know how to do it, but I'll be damned if I know how to make it interesting. We'll try to make making risotto interesting tonight for you guys. All right, so <laughs> we've got the shallot sauteing nicely and we've got our chicken stock nice and warm not boiling just you want to warm that up and you're going to keep it on that heat it's going to cook that a little bit now we're going to add in our arborio rice and put the whole box in there that's one pound okay so it's two cups so with two cups, you're going to need about six cups of liquid to make it work out right. All right. So that's a fair amount. We're going to make, this is going to be a big pot of risotto. All right. Now we've got the risotto in there and I want you guys to see this. I'm going to bring you a little closer. Get you down in here so you can see that. I'm going to turn that light off. You can see. Okay. Now you can see it better. All right. So you can see the arborio rice in there. And we want to blend that beautifully with the olive oil, the butter, and the shallot. We're just going to mix that around until the rice looks like it's coated and it's going to turn a little darker as the grain absorbs a little bit of that butter and olive oil. And I'm probably going to throw a little more butter in there just uh, because I like a little more butter. So it's one of those dishes where you combine the butter and the olive oil, and that's all good. Get a little butter fat in there. And we're going to put the Parmesan cheese in. That's about the last step. Uh, as the rice is really nice, it's absorbed a good bit. Uh, uh, oh, there's a question here. I didn't see it. Uh, process more garlic and necessity. Uh, uh, it's just a dark, it's a dark, it's not really red. It's just dark. Um, I don't put garlic in my risotto. You certainly can, if you like it. I use just the shallot because I like it sans garlic. I think garlic's a little strong for the risotto. I like my risotto nice and creamy and rich. Hello, Ed. Oh, you, uh, my pot, 
They're called the Green Pan, and I got them online. I tried to shop local, but I got these at overstock.com. They're, they're nice. They're good. They're no stick. They work pretty well for what I'm doing. All right. We've got our rice nicely coated with our olive oil and butter, and the shallot is fully incorporated in there. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to keep the heat fairly even, not too high underneath the risotto, because you don't want to scorch the bottom of it. And we are going to slowly add our chicken stock at about a cup, of the a cup at a time. We'll start with a little more because this is a big pot. So I just want to cover the rice. You can see how it's covered. And now the other aspect of this, it's a lot of stirring. So just be prepared to be standing at the stove and doing a lot of stirring. So we're going to do that. So this is going to be the first course in the dinner that I'm serving our Fulvio's Italian dinner on Friday night. We are doing uh, arancini, and the last time we made these, I made them with the roasted red pepper, uh, the coulis, the sauce that I make with roasted red peppers, and so we're going to do that as well. Uh, the nice part about this dinner is we give them a, a lot of food. Uh, nobody leaves hungry. We do a full five courses. Hello, John Gordon. So we're going to start with the arancini, which this is the very basis for our arancini right here. So I make everything from scratch. We start that way. So we do the arancini, and then one of the other uh, things that I like to do, um, I really love prosciutto wrapped around melon. Uh, my wife doesn't, oddly, because she, she doesn't like the melon. But what I do make instead, I do sort of a deconstructed version of that, and I think we've made this before. Uh, I use a chilled cantaloupe soup, and it's a cantaloupe, little white wine, and a little orange juice, and you blend that all up. There's no cooking, it's just blending. And then you chill it, you ladle that in the bowl, and then you put some creme fraiche on top, and then I take prosciutto, and I crisp it up in the oven, and I crunch that on top. And so that's our soup course. And so it's a little variation on prosciutto and melon. You get the nice cantaloupe soup. It's sweet, but it's not too sweet, and it's balanced with the salty uh, prosciutto. Really nice little version of that. Uh, we do a different salad for each of these dinners. These folks requested a traditional Caesar salad. And uh, I, when I do a Caesar salad, I use a traditional, I make the, the dressing right in front of everybody, table side. Uh, you rub the bowl with uh, garlic. My buddy Bob Weir uh, taught me his recipe, and it's really fantastic. Uh, I, I don't use anchovy fillets. I use anchovy paste in my Caesar dressing, which is, is fine. Um, but the fun part is I make it Jerry Vale and Rita Vale. Uh, Rita is still a great friend of mine. Of course, Jerry has passed. But... They gave me this giant salad bowl. So the fun is I get to take Jerry Vale's salad bowl uh, and make the Caesar there like he used to do, which is kind of nice. Um, all right. We're just going to keep adding as it absorbs. And the thing about this is, hello, Laura Vestri is watching, my Italian friend. Buonasera. I don't know what time it is. You're in Prato. She's just outside of Florence. Laura... Laura Vestri was one of the exchange students when I was a 16-year-old. We did an exchange program from Charlottesville, Virginia to uh, Prato and Poggio Acaiano, which are two little towns uh, outside of Florence, about 10 kilometers north of Florence. And uh, we saw everybody about five years ago when we went to Italy on our honeymoon. They arranged a little reunion for all of our, our, our exchange group. It was really fun. And then we reconnected on Facebook so we get to see everybody. All right, so we're letting that slowly absorb. And turn the heat up just a little bit. The one thing is you want to be careful. Don't overheat the bottom of your risotto, especially when you're making a big batch like this. Uh, and it will be easy to do. So you got to just monitor that heat. Keep this from boiling. Keep this from scalding. Those are the two things you have to do. Oh, hey, that's a... Art, you're exactly right. We do need to do that. My good buddy, Brett Kaur, celebrating his birthday. Brett, happy birthday to you, pal. Uh, I think it's, um, his wife is much, much younger than he is. I think Brett's turning 77 today, but uh, lucky two sevens, Brett. I told you, I'll, I'll, you bring over the jack and I'll provide the ice and we can have a drink together. <laughs> no, he's, he's not. He's not in his 70s yet, I don't think. Um, Brett, happy birthday to our good buddy, Brett and, and his uh, lovely wife, Mary. Uh, Mary, who works for 
uh, Coachella Valley Volunteers in Medicine. So that's how I've gotten involved with that organization. And that's what the dinner is for on Friday night. They uh, bought that at their big auction this year. So I don't remember what it went for. It went for about four grand. We sold two of them. So we made you know, about eight grand for the, for the charity. And uh, so I, I, we do that. Uh, I've done those for different charities, Coachella Valley Volunteers and Medicine. We sold three of those dinners for the Girlfriend Factor earlier this year. So I've got a number of <laughs> these charity dinners that we're going to be doing. Uh, so anyway, happy birthday, Brett. And Mary, you're a saint. Not just for your work with Volunteers of Medicine, but, you know, being married to Brett. Uh, all right. Oh, Alan, yes, I'm actually very much Italian. My real last name, I use Evans, which is my mother's maiden name. But my family name is Ayacetta. We're Napolitan. So I come by this Italian food kind of, kind of naturally. My mother loved risotto. My father did not. Any form of rice he didn't care for, which is really funny to me. Uh, but mom loved it, and so we would have it on occasion. Often when dad was, Pop did a lot of consulting. He worked for the EPA uh, right when it was first started, when, during the Nixon administration and subsequently for the Carter administration. Um, so Pop would go to D.C. for a few days at a time. And so then we would have the opportunity to have all the things that he didn't like to to eat. Hello, Andy. Andy Kahn, the, the greatest musician you've never heard of. He's uh, on the radio with me on KPSF on the weekends, nine o'clock. Tune in. Enjoy Andy and his great stories and great music, great playlist. He played with the Turtles and a whole bunch of other groups. Always good to see you, my friend. All right, so we're stirring this in. You can see when you start with the risotto, the first couple of cups of liquid absorb fairly quickly, but that's why you saute the, the grains of rice in the butter and the olive oil. You let them open up just a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna put a little salt and pepper in here. But remember, we're using Parmesan cheese in this, so you're not gonna need as much salt. And I used a low sodium chicken stock, because I don't want this to be overly salty. Uh, you wanna be careful about that. I did use salted butter. All right, let's center that, there we go. All right, so I think you guys can see how that's coming along. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, 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 that sounds really good. Canned anchovies and olive oil. Trader Joe's, Trader Joe's has a lot of good stuff. They really, they really do. I do a lot of my shopping at Gelson's because they always have everything I need. Um, and they're, you know, low, they're, like Jensen's, they're, they're a California brand. Jensen's is more local, of course, as well. But I like, Gelson's is also close to the house. It's easy to get to. You can always find pretty much what you need. One thing that is hard to find, um, oh, there was wine. Yes, there is wine. We're going to put a little wine in just a little bit. I'm going to let these open up a little bit more. And then, in addition to the chicken stock, I'm going to add about... A cup of wine. You want it overpowering. And since I'm making these into the fried risotto balls, one of the things that I really want to be careful about is making sure that it's a terrible camera ring. Sorry, making sure that when the risotto. So what happens is once I make this risotto, I'm going to lay it out in a pan. Brett Core is online. He actually is watching now. Hey, Brett, I I wished you a happy birthday earlier, and I don't know that you saw it. And I told people that we, I, we thought it was your 77th birthday. I said I was kidding. But I wanted to wish you a happy birthday. There's Mary. Mary, I'm making the risotto tonight for uh, Joe's Coachella Valley Volunteers in, in Medicine dinner. So I'm um, getting ready. Throughout the week when I get ready for those dinners, I make a little bit at a time. I've got risotto to make. I'm going to make some homemade meatballs, our veal and ricotta meatballs. That's the main dish. Uh, so they get risotto. They get soup. They get salad, they get meatballs and Fulvio's Italian sausage on the pasta of their choice. And uh, I then make our, our homemade cannoli filling. So that's going to be good stuff. That's the five courses that we are doing for Joe. Hello, Scotty. It's your, <laughs> it's your birthday tomorrow. Well, happy birthday, Scotty. A lot of birthdays going on. Zoe, nice to see you. So we're drinking a, a Monte Pulciano tonight. This is very nice. 
normally most people if you're making risotto you're going to drink the white wine because you have it open but i don't i don't drink much white wine all right now we're going to add in about a cup of our white wine this is just a chardonnay it's a it's actually an unoaked chardonnay which folks in the house tend to prefer so we're going to keep our heat up and we just add this in nice and slow and let the risotto slowly i'm going to let it bubble around the edges then you know it's uh, the liquid is starting to absorb nicely. Uh, good. <laughs> Susan LeBon, you're a white wine person. Okay. My wife is, my wife likes both whites and reds, uh, but she likes usually a Chardonnay at least to start to start with. Uh, and, you know, it depends on what we're eating. Uh, but she's a Chardonnay drinker, but she's really come to like these unoaked or lightly oaked Chardonnays. So, and that's, it's a good balance in your risotto a chardonnay with a little bit of that oak because you've got the parmesan cheese it's a nice creamy texture and so you want a wine that kind of goes with that a pinot grigio is probably gonna be a little too sharp and too fruity you don't want that in your risotto and you're gonna cook a lot of the alcohol out of it obviously but you want to be left with that nice flavor steph howard's watching nice to see you steph all right so we're gonna let that continue to absorb and this is again this is a pretty giant pot I'm making, I got to make 20 risotto balls out of this. Um, and I, so I want it to be a little firmer in texture, perhaps, than if I were serving it just as risotto, because again, we're going to have to form it and make uh, arancini out of it. So there's a fair amount of liquid in there, and now we're going to let that just slowly set up. And in a few minutes, now we've used, take, I want you to look at this. We've used just about half of our chicken stock already, and the risotto's coming along. I just added the wine and some more chicken stock, so it's covered up, but in a little bit, you'll see those grains continue to absorb, and they'll, they just drink this liquid. It just is amazing how fast it absorbs. But again, you gotta keep stirring, and you add it a little bit at a time and let it soak in, because risotto is really a very delicate dish at the end of the day. Even if you're going to turn it into arancini, it's got to be that way. So we'll continue to do that. Hello, Cardinal. And then once we finish that, and I won't keep you on the whole time, but we'll get you, get to the point where we're putting in our uh, Parmesan cheese so you can see it start to kind of turn into that creamy goodness. The Arborio rice, uh, native to Italy. I don't know that it was originally native to Italy, but that's where this stuff comes from. Uh, <laughs> late that we were watching the movie. Oh, very good. Well, tell Jen, uh, uh, tell Jen on Saturday I said hi. Anyway, uh, you'll find the pretty basic instructions on any box. R again, risotto is a pretty easy dish. It's just a time consuming dish. And so you give yourself some time to do it. Uh, but I do recommend highly getting a, like a Cola Vita or another Italian brand, the Arborio rice. Some people th think that you actually put cream heavy cream into risotto to get it that creamy. That, that is not the case. Uh, the, the, the creaminess actually comes from the rice itself. As you continue to add the liquid and stir it and the, and the grain of rice starts to break down a little bit, the starchiness comes out as a very, very creamy liquid when it combines with your chicken stock and the wine and then you put some Parmesan cheese in there, which is gonna help bind it when I make the risotto balls, but it also just adds to that creaminess and it really is just a lovely, wonderful texture. I, I love risotto. Uh, it's great as a main dish, it's great as a side dish, uh, and when you, when you get the right balance, when you put just enough wine, you get that little hint of it, it's really, really a wonderful thing. And when we make them into arancini, you get that crispy crust on the outside and the creamy rice, and then in the middle, a lot of people like to put like uh, a little bolognese or beef and peas in the middle, uh, which, and the Sicilians make really big arancini. I'm gonna make them a little smaller. And the only thing I'm putting in the middle is some fresh mozzarella cheese. So you get the creaminess of the, of the rice, the crunchy outside, and then in the middle, you get that little delight of fresh mozzarella. Uh, I am drinking, someone just asked, who asked it? Oh, Zoe. Zoe, I am drinking a Monte, Montepulciano. Uh, it's a Villa Cerina. It's a product of Italy. It's a very nice bottle of wine. I believe my brother-in-law and sister-in-law brought this when they were here last weekend. We didn't open, 
It's shocking that there was an unopened bottle of wine on one of those weekends, but it's open now. Hello, Carol. Nice to see you. Carol is watching. Mmm. Mmm. This is really nice. The nice thing about this Monte Pulciano, it's soft, it's kind of velvety, and it's not, it's not super, super dry. It's not like one of those that makes you go, Phew. you know, a lot of Italian wines are really dry and a little acidic. All right, let's turn our attention back to our risotto. Lori's watching. Good to see you. I'm going to bring this back down. I want you guys to see what's going on. All right. You can see it's bubbling a little bit. I'm keeping it at the right temperature. You don't want to scorch the bottom of this. Oh, it's really nice. And one thing I want to do is test. We're, we're a long way from done on this dish. Don't worry, I'm not going to keep you on the whole night. Uh, but let's check out and see just how far along we are. Mm. The wine flavor's right. That's perfect. Mm. Um, <laughs> more garlic is good for you. I like garlic in most things. I just don't put it in my risotto. Um, I like the I like the shallot shallot onion flavor. We're I'd say three quarters of the way there. That rice still has got um, it's a little crunchy. So we're going to continue to add. Here's another cup or so of chicken stock like that. So we're getting there. I'll post the full recipe, and again, it's it's super easy. It's a couple tablespoons of butter, a couple tablespoons of olive oil. Two shallots diced really nicely. Throw them in there, saute that in your olive oil and butter, and then you add in the arboreal rice with just the butter the, and the uh, olive oil and the shallot, and you stir the rice around until it absorbs a little bit. Uh, you want that nice, the, the butter and the olive oil to absorb into the grain of rice. It helps it open up and it will allow it to absorb your chicken stock and of course a little bit of that wine too. It will allow those grains to open up and absorb the liquid that you're going to add a little bit better. So, and it also gives you a really nice little flavor because remember when you just saute the grains with that shallot and your olive oil and butter, you're, you're really kind of imparting a lot of flavor up front so that when the risotto is done, it's really bursting with those flavors, particularly you get a little bit of that shallot flavor in there, which is nice. And if you want to put some garlic in there, some people do. Uh, we never did. Growing up, mom never put garlic in the, in the risotto. And my mother was not Italian. She was a sweet gal from Virginia, Welsh descent. But she learned all of the great Italian recipes from my grandmother on my dad's side. So it was nice. We got to share a lot of different recipes. We have some great old Southern Virginia recipes. Uh, my mother's buttermilk fried chicken is one that uh, <laughs> I've never been very good at making it, but she made a fantastic fried chicken. All right, we're going to continue to simmer this. You can see how quickly that liquid just soaks right in. Hello, Paul Lemon. Paul's watching. All right, and we're at the point. I want to get a little more liquid into the risotto before I add our Parmesan cheese. Near the end of the process, we're going to add about a cup of Parmesan cheese. Uh, a little more, a little less, depending on how much risotto you're making. Uh, and again, this, this, I'm making a full pound, two full cups. So this is going to be a fair amount of risotto, and so I've got a fair amount of Parmesan to go in there. We'll continue to add our liquid. And now it's basically a waiting game. You just got to be real patient. And that's the, that's the chief ingredient in risotto, is a little patience. And once that liquid uh, absorbs, we'll be at the point where we can add our Parmesan cheese. And then once we do that, of course, if you wanted to serve this as a main dish, chop, I like to do asparagus. So I would chop up asparagus points, toss it in right at the very end, stir it into the risotto, and then you can serve it. Of course, porcini mushrooms, any kind of mushroom. Seafood risotto is obviously big. We'd throw a little saffron in there to give it a little color. Uh, do some saffron and some scallops or shrimp. Always nice. Uh, seafood just pairs beautifully with risotto. Uh, and and it, it does break the one rule. I always say never put cheese on seafood. We just don't do it. But with risotto, you've got to have the Parmesan in there. So it, it's going to be a cheesy seafood dish. Cheers, everybody. Mmm. 
And I don't know if my brother-in-law and sister-in-law are watching, but if they are, thank you for that bottle of wine. All right, this is beginning to boil just a little bit. So you want to keep stirring. All right, now we're going to add our Parmesan. I've got to about the point where we can do that. Add that in. I like to add it in a little bit of time and get it fully incorporated. Oh, that's nice. Really nice, all right. And this is also going to help firm up the dish. Uh, and when I'm making the arancini, it's always nice to make sure that you get a nice compact rice ball that's easy to roll in our egg wash and the breadcrumb and turn it into those lovely golden crispy Oh, you can see the cheese? Look at that. That is so nice. All right, so we've got our Parmesan cheese in there. Parmigiano Reggiano. I've got just a little bit more liquid to add in. And then what I'm going to do is cover the pot and let that rice really, oops, sorry guys. Uh, let that rice really soften up uh, so that it's just absolutely tender and, and perfectly cooked. You, you don't want any hint, oops, <laughs> I think I might need a new tripod. That one's not holding up very well. Uh, so you, want, you don't want even a little hint of crunchiness. It, you don't want your risotto firm. It's gonna be nice and soft, supple, and that creamy texture. And you can see, we've added the Parmesan. You can see how creamy and delicious this is beginning to look. Look at that. Just a little salt and pepper. Parmesan, shallots, butter, and olive oil. That is, it's as simple as it gets. Uh, and again, the trick is just patience, slowly adding your liquid, letting it absorb, doing it a little bit at a time, adding in the Parmesan cheese late in the process. Because if you put it in too early, hi, Carol. Carol Hill is, Neil is watching. Um, if you put the Parmesan in too soon, you'll start to see it separate and you'll get that the, a little bit of the oil coming out of the cheese and that will you know, flow to the top. So you want to add it in later. You don't want to overcook the Parmesan cheese so it stays nicely incorporated into the rice itself. So if you want to serve this as a side dish, you got that option. It can be a great main dish with what, whatever protein you might want to put in there. Seafood is the traditional, porcini mushrooms. Again, I like to serve it. Uh, what, I've, what I've done before is, uh, you know, you make the, par the risotto, the Parmesan risotto, I put fresh asparagus on top instead of adding it into, uh, because then uh, you get that nice presentation. And then I put a filet about this big, lay it on the side and kind of prop it up on top of the pile of risotto. So you get this really nice presentation and it turns out pretty nicely. But tonight I'm going to be turning that lovely pot of risotto into arancini, the fried risotto balls, which will be served Friday night at our Coachella Valley Volunteers and Medicine Dinner. Hello, Mr. Chris Long. I was talking about you today. Uh, I ran into Joe Smith, who, of course, you guys, I don't know that you overlapped in Dayton, but uh, he said if I saw you to tell you hello. So I'm seeing you and hello. Hope you're doing well, buddy. Uh, Lori, thanks. All right, guys, we're just about done with the risotto. There's just a little bit more liquid to go in there and We'll be serving up and I'll be turning in what I'm gonna do. Once that's done, I take, you lay it out in the pan. If you're gonna make arancini and we've done this, I think I showed this to you. Put it in your pan, lay it out. I, st <laughs> I do still owe you 20 bucks. Uh, Chris Long, we bet on football. I don't know how I ended up down 20 bucks this season. I won a lot of games. But then we're gonna lay the risotto out on the pan. We're gonna make it a nice, even flat layer. We're gonna throw it in the fridge let it set up, and then I'm gonna cut it up into squares, equal squares, and we take those, wrap them around a little uh, mozzarella, and then we put them back in the fridge, let them, let them firm up, and then we roll them in egg wash, breadcrumb, and then we deep fry them. Super easy, but again, it's a process. Hello, David Rosenberg, nice to see you. So our, let's give one last look over here at the risotto. I think we're, oh, this is actually looking really good. So you can see it bubbling just a little, and you can see just how creamy it is. It's really starting to, to shape up beautifully. Ah, oh, look at that. Good looking risotto. Put a little more of our liquid in there. That's gonna just about do it for the, the 
the chicken stock. That's six cups of chicken stock that we had going. And once that's absorbed, this risotto is going to be perfect, soft, supple, velvety, creamy. Oh, it's good stuff. Let's try a little bit more. Just to make sure we're on the right track. Mmm. Oh. Oh, yeah. That is just about there. The last of our liquid is in. We only have that much to go. All right. We'll, of course, post some pictures. I already posted pictures of the arancini I made. I made arancini for... It's very traditional for uh, Italians and Sicilians to have arancini on Easter because, of course, they... And you make them in the shape of an egg. I made them kind of round. You're supposed to make them in the shape of an egg. That's the way it's supposed to work. Uh, so this is my second batch of arancini for the week. But we have never made the risotto together, and I just wanted to give you this. It's a great, basic, simple recipe. It's easy to make, and your family will love it. It is uh, a staple in Italian households. And uh, if you love mashed potatoes or rice pilaf, swap out that for a little risotto uh, on any given meal that you're making. And it's going to just really uh, jazz up any dish. You're going to love it. Listen, guys, thank you very much for spending some time with me in the kitchen. Make this risotto recipe. I'll post the full recipe right here on Facebook. And these videos stay on Facebook. But I also put them on my YouTube channel, which is Patrick Evans in the Kitchen. You can find all the recipes we've done. You can find the arancini recipe there as well. So now you can make the risotto and make the arancini, the risotto balls. Uh, it, it's always fun to do a little cooking on Wednesday, and it's always fun to spend some time with you. Thank you very much for stopping by, and uh, we're looking forward to seeing you again next week right here in the kitchen.